Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship today at Church Street United Methodist Church. This is the second Sunday in October, but I wanted to let you know how full this month is here at 900 Henley Street. We have two Master Arts Series events at the end of the month, and our Children's Fall Festival is happening. Please check out our website for these special opportunities and just to find out more about the mission and ministry here at Church Street United Methodist Church. Will you join me in our call to worship? Liberating God, in joyful confidence we come together to praise our God. Songs of praise proclaim the awesome and freeing actions of our God. Faithful God, all creation and all peoples join in our songs of praise to God. All peoples in creation celebrates the mighty wonders of our amazing God. Enlivening God, as a community of faith, we have been inspired and blessed by God's faithful commitment to God's people, bringing them all to a new hope. Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Tell the world how glorious God is, for our lives are in God's hands, and God keeps our feet from stumbling. Come, let the whole world bless our God. Amen.
join me for our prayer for illumination this morning. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter, starting with verse 11 and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Our county is getting a new school, a new elementary school, and that sounds wonderful. There are three of our schools in the northwest part of the county that are overcrowded, so a new school will solve the problem. But who will go there? How will the zoning maps change? Parents and grandparents are looking at different proposals. Where will our children go? Where will our grandchildren go? We do need more room, but I don't want my child to move. There is always anxiety when we talk about changing boundaries. Property lines, zoning maps, election districts and maps, these boundaries play a big role in our everyday lives we notice it more when there is a decision being made to change a boundary or add a new one. There are boundaries all around us, seen and unseen. Luke begins this story telling us where Jesus is, along the border between Galilee and Samaria. Remember, he is on his way to Jerusalem. That is the focal point on our map. You have those maps in your Bible, don't you? The map changes, well actually, the boundaries change. As you flip through the pages of the different maps, the land mass is the same as we move through the Hebrew scriptures to Jesus' day, but the borders change. On the early maps, there is no border between Galilee and Samaria. It used to be one region. Remember the kingdom of David? It was after Solomon's reign that the kingdom divided into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Boundaries are set. Then Assyria destroys the capital of the northern kingdom. Boundaries change. Traditions change. The Babylonians take the leaders and the upper class from the southern kingdom into exile. Boundaries change. Those who are left behind in the southern kingdom to marry and start families, wander off a bit from home. They are the Samaritans. Boundaries change again. As exiles return and old theological debates between the Samaritan Jews and the exiled Jews gain new life. So when Luke says the region between Galilee and Samaria, I think he wants us to focus on the between that Jesus is in an in-between place where there has been enmity between two groups of people for a long time. 
And this region is a place where folks would prefer not to run into one another. But Jesus, being Jesus, on his way to the cross, instead of taking the easier road, the usual travel route, he goes to this in-between place, crosses the boundary from easy road to dangerous road. He approaches another border where the lepers are. Lepers know their place and know how, they must, how far they must stay away from people. We felt inconvenienced with stay six feet apart. Lepers could only be with other lepers and had to be in their own colony. We don't, we don't even say community, do we? They would holler as people approached them to let them know they were there. Don't come near. Jesus crosses another boundary as he gets close enough to speak to these ten men with the skin disease. He has heard them raise their voices, not in warning him about who they are, but in professing they know who he is. Jesus, Master, show us mercy. Jesus is close enough, even if he raises his voice, he has had to have gotten off the path to approach these men, to enter into their territory. Go, show yourself to the priests. The priests in the temple are the ones who declared them unclean and lepers, and it is the priest who can declare them pure and clean. Jesus can heal them, but it is the priest who has the power to restore them to their community. The men trust Jesus' words, turn and head towards the synagogue and see that they are indeed healed. They obey Jesus, probably running to the priest. We've been made clean, we've been made clean. Can't you imagine their joy? These nine are obedient, doing exactly what they are told to do, perhaps fearful that if they slow down or, or if they turn back, their skin disease may return but they are surely in a state of gratitude. So why does Jesus cause us to look back after them as they run with their smooth, unblemished skin? What's going on? Maybe the Samaritan, and Jesus makes a point of letting us know he is a Samaritan, a foreigner. Maybe the Samaritan is aware of other boundaries and borders and zoning laws. Although he has been made well of, from leprosy, he is still an outsider. The priest, if he acknowledged him at all, could declare him physically healed, but he was still a Samaritan. Would his nine colony mates welcome him now that they are all clean? Would they go out to lunch? Probably not with a Samaritan. You know how you are sometimes in an ordeal with someone who is different from you. That person next to you in the airplane when you're stuck on a runway for hours, or you're stuck in an elevator for 30 minutes, which seems like an eternity. You're in that family waiting room at the hospital because you're all in the same boat. We talk, we get along, we commiserate together. But when the door opens, when the pilot says you are free to exit the plane, when you leave the hospital, there's a, a familiar nod and a have a good day. But you would not ask these folks to go out for coffee now that the ordeal is over. Your differences have taken over. We don't have time and they've got their life and it would probably make them uncomfortable. That's just natural. The Samaritan knows all about this. When he recognizes that he is healed, he turns around and praises God with a loud voice and falls at Jesus' feet. Gratitude journals are very popular now. Make a list of 10 things you're grateful for and you'll have a better day. My husband remembered to pick up coffee filters from the store. That other Honda waved me into the, onto the interstate from the uh, exit ramp. Someone brought cookies to work. My son called with good news. The Braves clinched the National League East. 
that's only five. You know, the other nine were grateful. They had to have been. But it is the stopping what you are doing and recognizing that the good thing is from God, is because of God. Having the posture of thanksgiving to God is bowing down before Christ or laying on the ground at his feet. When we do our gratitude list, our posture is more fist pumps in the air. Go Braves or woohoo green lights. Yay, I can make coffee. They center around the achievements of others, the circuitry of traffic lights, having beans in the coffee hopper. Jesus says this man's thankfulness has made him well. But wasn't he already well? He had been cured, but Jesus grants him a fuller blessing. Or rather, the Samaritan is able to experience a fuller blessing because he knows his good health is from God. And he knows he will probably be alone in this world, that he does not have community, but that he is a child of God, and that gives him freedom and joy. There is physical healing, and then there is being made well. You've heard enough, enough sermons to know that the word salvation has the same root word as health or well-being. I think back to my gratitude list that I started. Yes, thankful Brad remembered coffee filters. Do I really praise God for that? Along with saying thank you to Brad, how about thanking God for a wonderful helpmate who does a great job shopping but also is there for me day in and day out. That ought to be on my list every day. When I see him as a gift from God, it affects how I treat our relationship. I am grateful my children call me. I see them as gifts from God, and that relationship is precious. The person in the other car, what a nice guy. But do I take time to truly offer thanks for good and kind people along the way and pray that they will have a good day? Even in my giving thanks, I can stay within the lines, be perfunctory, and not cross over into a deeper relationship with God. Will I break down my own barriers by stopping, bowing, even falling face down to give thanks? To be honest, that is not a posture I am used to. But perhaps in truly giving thanks to God, seeing God as the author of all good gifts, I too will be made well. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, with thankful hearts we pray this morning for the mission of the church and the peace of the world. We are thankful because we know that you are present and at work in the midst of all our troubles and challenges. Help us to always find thankfulness in the midst of our lives and to recognize the giftedness of each day. Gracious Lord, we pray for your peace to be present and at work in our lives and within the world. We proclaim Jesus as the Prince of Peace, and yet we struggle to witness fully and faithfully to the peaceable kingdom of Christ. Grant that your spirit would be at work in our hearts to establish peace within each of us. We pray for peace and reconciliation in our own community and around the world. We pray for a just peace to prevail in Ukraine. Give courage and hope to all people who daily face violence and humble those who make decisions that lead others into harm. As communities across the Southeast continue to recover, from a devastating hurricane. We pray for those who remain without all the resources they need. We pray for those who are volunteering, those who clean, those who work to rebuild infrastructure, and those whose livelihood has been disrupted. We pray that your Holy Spirit would keep before us all those who suffer from natural disaster long after the event fades from the headlines. And for those who suffer or are alone or in any kind of trouble, we pray. 
Make us mindful of the needs of those around us and empower us to respond with love and compassion. Christ's compassion upon those who suffered and his willingness to venture across all sorts of boundaries in order to reveal his deep and transforming love is an example to us. As those called to follow after our Lord Jesus, guide us by your Holy Spirit that we might be faithful disciples that care for the vulnerable and the hurting within our own community and around the world. It is with abundant thanks that we offer these prayers and petitions to you, Almighty God, as we join together in that prayer that Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we move into a new week together, I pray that you know full well the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and for always. Amen. Thank you.